Phillies mail bag. Frank Float. Taiwan Walker placed on the 15 day DL. Sanchez gets a new deal. But who's going to take that spot? Talk to Frank Close from 973ESPN.com now as he joins us a day early for the mailbag, but a ton of questions following a weekend against the Arizona Diamondbacks. He joins us now on the sports app for 973 ESPN. What's going on, Frank? Not much, Frank. How are you? All is well. Uh, a successful weekend, I guess. You said. Friday night, a little wonky uh, as they lose that game uh, um, uh, with um, uh, Arizona. But they come back 12 runs on Saturday. And uh, really, the peak performance on Saturday and Sunday was the story, right? Uh, I guess the big story starts off with Taiwan Walker going on the injured list. Let's start there. Get your perspective on uh, this Walker injury and kind of lead the two weeks on what this could mean big picture. Well, for the Phillies, of course, Taiwan Walker, he's been He's been there for starter. He's he's just in a lot of innings. You know, that that is probably his biggest contribution to the team. I know his ERA is a bit must have been wonderful. I know he hasn't really dominated like the other sense of the rotation there. Uh, but you know, there, there are a lot of innings that they have to pick up. Now, uh Spencer Turnbull, who played very, very well in the early season when he got the opportunity to make some starts, he's gonna slide into that this week into now and he played the end in the bullpen is Mike from Mercado. Now He's a name you might not know a lot about, but really picked him up in a minor change with the Rays the offseason. And he's been pretty clear dominant at the uh, AAA Lehigh Valley. You know, he's mostly been a starter. Uh, he's kind of been kind of going back to innings. Um, he's got only his last couple starts because he throw five innings and six of them respectively. But before that, they held him back to like three or four as he's working as a starter. And he did very, very, very well for the Iron Pigs. ERA as he says, 171. So uh, he's been an opportunity. He's going to the bullpen. Now, he, he pitched most recently on the 18th, so he's kind of a ready arm in the bullpen. And then, considering the uh, turn bowl, he placed Walker on Friday night in that game where Walker left a little bit early. Uh, he'll line up to take that start on Wednesday in Detroit. Yeah, so uh, obviously now um, you have to make a decision on Walker. Maybe they're pushing back to the middle. But do you think uh, that Walker will be coming back in the 10 days, or you think this will be like a prolonged well, he's a 15-day IL for pitchers, so I, I think he would miss a couple starts, maybe three, and then I think he'd be right back. You know, they, they didn't think at first that it was a big deal. I positioned it almost like it was a real close to small in his finger. Something like that probably was really for me, you know, if I'm assuming, you know, but they might, they might want to give him a break. I remember last year they gave him a little bit of break during the season to try to, uh, try to get him to work on some of his issues last, keep him, keep him rested, so maybe... A little bit simple, a few starts, and then uh, go back to what the current plan was, which is to try to limit Turnbull innings so that he can help them more down the stretch. But I would imagine that, that Walker's going to enter the rotation just after those two or three starts at a 15-day stand with the cover. I know James asked this question in the mailbag about Walker. If he was on another team, would be great for him. I think we all know kind of the answer there. But I guess you could throw it around. Would James be interested in trading for Walker? You know, I, 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 I'm probably not in the majority here, but I, I think, yes, he does provide value to certain teams. And, and for me, it's not because he's going to help a team in the front of their rotation down the stretch into the playoffs, but teams need starters that can give them innings. You know, I think back to the 2016 and 2017 Phillies. You know, they paid Jeremy Hellickson a nice amount of money each of those years, actually not, not, not much differently than Walker's making now. Uh, and he really got that rebuilding Phillies team some innings so that the, the, the pitchers that they're trying to break into the major leagues weren't overwhelmed. So, you know, I could see a team and, and the Phillies might need to eat some money to do this, but if down the line, and I don't think it would happen anytime soon, because again, the Phillies could probably benefit from those innings for now. I could see a team that's perhaps rebuilding want that stability. And, you know, if Walker has two more years on his deal after this one. Could they find a home for him, especially as the Phillies seem to be locking in all their starters and they have some some fresh blood rising up in the system? But, you know, I think they could make a deal if they needed to make a deal. But, I, you know, I think I think we need to remember, Mike, that he's a fifth starter. What does the fifth starter do try to, if they're successful? Try to give you some innings, try to mostly keep you in games. Uh, and I think Walker, for the most part, has done that, even though he hasn't been outstanding. 
Yeah, and obviously the, the the tough part for the Phillies is that Walker hasn't been great, and the guy who replaced him was very good. That's the problem. It's not like you know in the past, you know, last year uh, people were complaining about Bailey Falter, but they didn't really have another option. And then of course Sanchez got the opportunity and kind of grabbed it. But you know, Falter was terrible as the fifth guy last year. But every other guy they they they, they tried was just not very good. In this instance, they tried another guy out of necessity. And that guy performed. I think that's what's making it tough for the Phillies optically. Yeah, I think that's fair to say. But, you know, Turnbull's got, got a really interesting story. I think one of the things that, that's going to make this start against Detroit in Detroit next week so interesting is that last year, while Turnbull was injured, the, the, the Tigers tried to send him down to the minor leagues. And ultimately, like, they went to court and the league overturned his minor league option. And so he got a full year's salary and service time against the Tigers last year. But, you know, so he's got this he, – last year was a, a big adventure for, for Turnbull. And I think right now with the Phillies, they, you know, they look at his history. He had some injuries, hasn't pitched more than 56 innings except in 2019 when he started for pretty much the whole season for the Tigers. I think they, they recognize he's pitching well, but they might see that arm giving them more value down the stretch when they need him perhaps more than right now where you can get away with somebody else making the starts. Now it's hard to, it's hard to say, Hey, he's pitching great. You know, uh, you're going to the bullpen, but, uh, but you know, I think they, they do see value in him. In fact, that's why they picked him up. And you know, it was kind of one of those wild cards, you know, when the Phillies signed him, and Kobe Allard, and you know, they, they brought in a few veteran guys for relatively cheap amounts of money. You know, they were just hoping that one of them would work out and help the team. And, and he certainly has done that so far. Uh, and I think they, really want to make sure that he is with them down the stretch. So they, you know, they, they did, they did move on from Walker <laughs> letting him pitch uh, a couple times, you know, during the season, as I mentioned, and then into the playoffs. So I think they want to rested uh, Spencer Turnbull. Yeah. Uh, who's, who's not pushed too hard right now. Frank close 97.3 ESPN.com Phillies insider since 2016, answering your mailbag questions here. Uh, before we get to some more mailbag questions here, um, Give me your thoughts on the whole Castellanos. He's obviously scorching right now. He's had a really nice stretch here, but I think we know how this story ends, right? I don't care how hot he gets. I feel like we know that the lack of consistency will pop up at the worst moments. Yeah, uh, that, that's the story of Castellanos. At the end of the year, is I mean, you know, for example, I saw someone post, oh, well, since June 1st, he's, he's hitting 269 with four home runs. Well, if you were in that series in Baltimore and, and he was hitting in the two hole, you just watched him go over those series. And, you know, that that's the story of Nick Castellanos. He has moments where he's pretty low and then he has other moments where, where, where he's killing it. Like he has in the last week. So I, it's just something you got to deal with, with him. I think that's why they like to hit him seventh and, and not have him be one of those poor bats in the lineup. So if you're all healthy, having that guy hitting seventh, isn't that bad a thing because he's going to be, the one that steps up in certain moments when you need him, and and yeah, he's going to go for four and swing at everything other times. And uh, but I will say this: the the Phillies have been working with him. You know, you've seen Kevin Long working with him on, on a couple of tweaks to his swing, and 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 he's getting the credit for that, at least in the organization right now for this little turnaround. So we'll see how long Castellanos can keep this up. Frank, uh, let's get back into some of your mailbag questions here over at ninety-seven-three ESPN.com. A lot of pitching questions. Um, we just saw uh, the Phillies extend it, Christopher Sanchez, but Fred wants to know why did they do that? He wasn't going to be a free agent anytime soon. They had a lot of controllable years here. So was it a smart decision to buy out all those years? You know, it's pretty interesting. The Phillies were not actively pursuing this. It was a matter where Sanchez's agent called the Phillies and said, hey, you know, Chris, Chris is interested in working out an extension. Is there any way we can do this? And, uh, and as Dave Dombrowski told at the press conference, he said, hey, look, you know, we don't really like to do this during the season, but if something can come together fast, let's see if it can. And, you know, for a guy like uh, Sanchez, you know, he's kind of been on the bubble. You know, when the Phillies traded for him, he was this guy that just threw really hard and was all over the place. In fact, even even last season when he had a nice little season, and even, to be quite honest, going into this season, you weren't really sure what you had with him. Now, was he the guy that, that had no control and threw hard, or, or was he becoming a pitcher? And I think after last season, you, you still had some doubts, but right now he's really become a pitcher. Uh, you know, I expressed concern about the Phillies' depth or the concern of counting on him to be a starter 
and boy is he delivered at this point. So, you know, after Sunday, five and three with a two six seven ERA, you know, those trio of Phillies starters leading the league in ERA. Um, but you know, I, this this was a this was a special thing in that you know someone like Sanchez looking to to, to have that life changing money, you know, really wanting to have that stability. And he asked for it. They got something together quickly. And for the Phillies, if he keeps pitching like this, this is going to be a bargain. I mean, those those last couple arbitration years can be a big deal, you know, in terms of uh, figuring out your, your budget and, and how much money you have to fill other holes. So this gives the Phillies some cost certainty. And it's only $22.5 million, according to Matt Gelb of The Athletic, over the next four years. And the Phillies also got a couple of option years on that contract to take it to 2030 you know and those two amounts being 14 million and 15 million so it's one of those things where if this worked out uh the phillies have a bargain potentially although there might be some escalators in that if he ends up finishing in the, the top few of cy young voting and such uh we don't know the specifics of the deal but um but yeah this this could be a real bargain for the phillies and you know it's just amazing like that you know a couple of years ago you're thinking, oh man, you know, Wheeler's going to be a free agent. Nolan's going to be a free agent. Uh, who do you have behind him? And uh, and right now, you see they have three pitchers that are locked up to help anchor this starting rotation for a few years to come, and then more talent in the system. I mean, the Phillies are in an envious position right now around baseball. No one ever seems to have enough pitching, and the Phillies took advantage of this opportunity to to lock a young guy up, and you know, it could pay dividends in the future. I mean, this is still less money than. Scott Kingery got before he played a day in the majors. Yeah, I was thinking of Kingery because he's the last guy I can really think of that got all those arbitration years bought out, and that didn't go very well for them. Uh, this is a little different because Sanchez has done it at the major league level, albeit uh, not for a, a long amount of time here. What, what I do want to ask is, what does this mean for Painter, Abel, McGarry, and, and the younger pitchers here? I mean, you got Wheeler. You've got Sanchez, you've got Nola, I imagine. And, and one of the questions in the mailbag that we'll get to is Suarez. Um, what does it mean for the young pitchers in this organization? It means nothing. They continue going along their, their journey of trying to become a major leaguer. And if they force their way in, they force their way in. And you deal with that embarrassment of riches when you have it. So, you know, I think one thing about baseball, you know, prospects are prospects. You don't know which way they're going to go. I mean, if you think back to – Oh gosh! Remember Spencer Howard a couple of years ago? Was he was he the untouchable, right? And then Sixto Sanchez, he's untouchable, right? You, you know, you always have these these top prospects, and and you're lucky if they hit. And uh, you know, having a certainty at the major league level, I think, is more valuable than than expecting those guys or counting on those guys. And let's be honest, I mean, Mick Abel's had a little bit of a rough go in his first year at AAA, so you know, it's going to take a while. I don't, you know, for me personally, I don't like to assume that any prospects are going to be a guarantee in the major leagues. And mm -hmm. so if you've got talent, lock it up and keep it in your organization. And you know, the best thing for a team like the Phillies, who has some financial power, all it costs them is money. You know, it's not like it's, it's much worse when you've got to then trade your prospect capital to go acquire pieces that you don't have. So I'm, I'm all for, I'm all for just, if it's just costing money, spend it, keep them in your organization, keep more talent than, than you don't have. And just, just let it work itself out. Yeah, I mean, I, I wonder, I guess the follow-up to that would be, because um, a big picture here, I, I don't know how much longer you can keep going with this outfield the way it is. I mean, sure, you can get through the regular season, but big picture, can you really have Pache and Marsh platooning and Dave Dahl and, and Merrifield platooning and an inconsistent Castellanos? Like, do you have to put it under the microscope and say, look, this is getting us through the regular season, but to really win the World Series, we're going to have to get more consistency out there. And we have a, you know, a plethora of younger arms that just don't have a spot. Can you utilize them to really get a bigger, uh, more consistent outfielder? You know, I don't know you need to use it for that. I mean, obviously, if you're another team and the Phillies have a couple pitchers in the top 100 prospects, they're going to be asking about them if you're getting into trade talks. But the Phillies have other prospects, too. You know, I think uh, – I think I think if you're the Phillies, you know their their past administration said this it never really worked out. But if you can if you can work if you can grow the arms in your organization and hold on to them, then you can just pay money for bats. And so there'll be a team. I, I think I think the Phillies are just to be clear. I think the Phillies will add an outfielder. I mean I don't think I don't think you know David Dahl is even though he's had his moments is a sustainable option. And Whit Merrifield probably shouldn't be starting right now. So. 
I, I think at least one outfielder has come in their way. I don't think they need to dip into their pitching to do it. I mean, they may choose to, depending on what the options are out there. But, but yeah, you know, I would, I would not be worried to trade a, a Mick Abel. Andrew Painter, I might still hesitate a little bit if I'm the Phillies just because he's, he seems to have such a high ceiling. But, um, but if, if I'm the Phillies, I would, I, would try to, I would try not to trade the pitching capital if I had the opportunity to, to trade some of the bats instead. Yeah, we'll see what uh, Dave Dombrowski ends up doing here. Uh, and let's get back into the mailbag questions as uh, Mike wants to know, do you think the Phillies will or are able to extend Ranger Suarez? I mean, they got a lot of money uh, on, in the pitching. They got some money out there. But is Suarez a guy who's having just an? I mean, he's going to be the starter, I would imagine, in the All-Star game, right? Uh, are they going to be able to extend him? I, you know, I think I think they will. Here, here's the thing that we've seen the last few years, right? Big time pitching in Zach Wheeler, big time pitching in Aaron Nola. They've found the ways to sign these guys, and I think they have a couple things going for them. The main one being, players want to be in Philadelphia. You know, that that's half the battle, right? And, and even when Aaron Nola hit the free agent market, it still became an issue of, okay, well, I'm a free agent. I've got offers from other teams like the Braves, but what what will it take to get me back in Philadelphia? And I think. I think there's no reason to, to, to be pessimistic that if the Phillies want to re-sign Ranger Suarez, and, they've, and Dave Dombrowski openly said so in that press conference with Sanchez the other day, it's hard to believe that, that if there's that mutual interest that they're not going to get something done. Now, um, as I mentioned a little while ago in terms of Sanchez, I usually don't like to do deals during the year. Uh, Jim Bowden of, of SiriusXM, the former GM, he actually just said he heard that the Phillies are working on a deal with Sanchez. Uh, but you know, I think I think at the season's end, you know, we still got one more year of control after this. That's a good time to do it. And, you know, I think uh, he's certainly increasing the amount of money he's going to get by pitching this well this season. But, you know, I think I think we've learned what Ranger Suarez is. He's just somebody who's very calm and measured and just really executes on the mound and, and just takes his time and makes sure that, that he throws a good pitch every time. And, and I think that, yeah, he would be in demand on the open market, but I think, too, you know, as we saw with the other pitchers, I don't think he's eager to get out of Philadelphia. And 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 Mike, if they can sign him too, I mean, imagine having four starters of that quality uh, locked up for a few years. You're you're going to feel really good about the Phillies for a few years to come. Yeah, and uh, you feel really good about him right now. What's your over under for All Stars? We were counting earlier. I mean, we can make a strong case for ten. I don't think they'll <laughs> get ten. Uh, where do where do you because I you figure well you know that it's going to be Harper. Bohm, and I would guess Stott, I mean, not Stott, uh, Turner, I guess is going to get elevated to the starter with uh, Betts being out. So you're going to get those three. Then I guess you could make a case for Suarez, Wheeler, Sanchez, Nola, Strom, and Hoffman. But I can't imagine they all make it. Yeah, they. They. it's a matter of numbers, right? Every team in the league is going to need to have a player. It's there's going to be some there's going to be some real snubs this time. I, I would put the over under at five, and I and I, I tend to I tend to think that that logistics could even make it under five. And who gets who gets snubbed? I mean, probably the relievers that don't have large numbers of saves. Uh, I think that would be my concern for for the in terms of Jeff Hoffman and, and Matt Strom. Uh, could Zach Wheeler get snubbed again? Maybe I don't know, but I mean, he certainly he's got the numbers to back it up. Yeah, this is going to be a time where you're going to see some snubs. And, and why? Because even the Miami Marlins have to find somebody to put on this team. And that unfortunately means somebody who's worth or worthy of it isn't going to get the opportunity. And so, yeah, I'm going to put it at five, around five. All right. It's Frank Close, 97.3 ESPN.com. The Phillies and the Tigers renew their long storied rivalry today. Uh, they'll have a three game set out there. All these crazy. Uh, interleague games when you got a, a an NL East uh, playing an AL Central team. Uh, Tigers thirty six and forty one. Uh, it is um, a little Monday through Wednesday, and then the Phillies. Uh, after that, the schedule gets kind of interesting before the All Star break. Here, we'll dive into that a little deeper. But Phillies and the Tigers tonight, and of course Frank Close over at ninety seven three ESPN dot com has the Phillies mailbag each and every uh, Tuesday. We had them on a Monday today here on the Sports Bash. Thank you, Frank. Thank you, Mike. All right, man. Frank's back next week. 